Welcome everybody to the Rest Hole. This is the commercial break section of the show that's going to be filled with all the promotional material I have to do as far as my plugs go, as well as the internet wrestling community outreach segments for the week. We're going to start off with the Smark My Words fan submitted comment of the week, and this time around the winner is Callum Wiggins. I was asking during the NXT TakeOver Brooklyn show, what the hell does CN mean? Because I apparently forgot all the Spanish that I took in high school. And once we established that I was not only an idiot, but that it also meant 100, he threw out the comment, so Almas is worth 10 Ty Dillingers, of course, 10 times 10, perfect 10, that kind of a thing. Math jokes, that's what you get here at Smart Out Moments. <laughs> so, I laughed at that quite a bit. Uh, thank you, Callum, for sending that comment in, and of course, everybody else as well for leaving their comments all over the place on YouTube, Twitter, and so on and so forth including where that comment was left, our Mega Maniacs group on Facebook. If you don't know what that is, that's where most of our chatting goes down, and of course you can find it at facebook.com slash groups slash the Mega Maniacs. Start sending in your questions for the August mailbag special that's going to be happening next week. You can do so by tweeting at SmartOutMoment with the hashtag mailbag, or better yet, leaving an email through the contact form of the website. Got a couple things already from Silent Wood of Doom and Peter Piccinini, but the more we have, the better it is so we can pick and choose which ones we're going to end up talking about on the show. If you want to pick our brains about whatever it is that you want us to answer, send those questions our way, and, you know, we'll do that, because that's how that segment works. That's the whole point of it. If you're looking to help support the growth of Smart Out Moment, there's a couple different ways that you can help us out. Direct method of donating money, if you want to go that route, is through either the PayPal, the YouTube's fan funding method, or if you can sign up through the Patreon account. You can also check out the Smarkets, love that term, where you can buy some t-shirts, mugs, and other merchandise over at our Redbubble and TeePublic shops. We have a TeePublic shop for Fanboys Anonymous as well, if you're more on the geeky side of things like that, you don't like what we have for Smart Out Moment. You can also help spread the word about the website in a few ways, such as the Sign Me Up initiative. All you gotta do is take a smart out moment, sign to a wrestling show, and send me a picture of yourself holding it up. Go ahead and check out the website. There's a new one from Peter Piccinini from SummerSlam. Awesome. Big thanks to you, Peter, for doing that. And a shout out for you doing that on the Monday Night Raw one, too. I saw that as well. Uh, even more importantly than that, though, you guys can help us grow our audience with our social media presence, and you can do that with all sorts of different ways. You can like and share our posts on Facebook, you can retweet and follow us on Twitter, you can give each and every video on YouTube a thumbs up, obviously subscribe if you haven't already, and leave your comments as well, the more comments, the more discussion, the more views, all that kind of stuff. And you can share the websites, articles, and everything else by posting things on Reddit, on message boards, everywhere else on the internet. As long as you guys are getting our name out there, it's going to be helping. So everything greatly appreciated. And the same thing applies to Fanboys Anonymous as well. That's the spot where I do my movie reviews and other kind of nerdy sort of superhero-y topics like that. So if you want to geek out with me for that kind of stuff, head on over to fanboysanonymous.com, follow the Facebook and Twitter accounts, and of course, just the same with this one, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That brings us to the major topic of the video, the wrestling trivia question of the week, otherwise known as the Ask Him. Let's go ahead and backtrack to last week's question, which was, which year did SummerSlam draw its highest attendance record? And that was Wembley Stadium, 1992, 80,355 is what they were reporting. But just to spice it up a little bit more, I said, why don't you guys try to give me the three next highest ones? And those were 1993, the very next year. That was 23,954. Huge drop there, 80,000 to 23. That was at the Palace of Auburn Hills in Michigan. Then the next year after that, 1994, was actually the next one too. 23,000 even is what they're reporting. Highly doubt that it was 23,000. But whatever, that's what they're reporting. That was at the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. And then a couple years after that, 1998, 21,588 Madison Square Garden. So let's see who got it right, who got it wrong, and who said whatever else they said. Silent Wood of Doom throws out here, SummerSlam 92 in Wembley was the highest, no clue about the rest. Son of a whore, for the second time in the last three years, I actually straight up knew the Ask Him, but I accidentally backed out of the page after writing a long comment and lost it, so I got fed up and was going to do it later. Fuck useless forward back buttons on the mouse that you can't get a quality mouse without, are impossible to disable, and just serve the purpose of pissing me off when I accidentally hit them at the wrong time. I love those buttons, by the way. That's like, uh, the mouse that I use now, I never had one of those buttons on the other mouses that I've been using for, mice, mouse, I don't know, that I've been using over the past few years. Got this one? I love it. I use it constantly, but to each his own. He says, uh, 
Also, fuck Lanny Poffo, and holy fuck, Nia Jax's prey on Monday was adorable. I don't remember who that was. Oh, then he also says, I guess there's going to be another Monday before you read this. So now, I don't know which Monday it was. Uh, who, you know, leave a comment. I don't remember which one she was. Oh, wait, she was the little tiny one with, uh, like, the real spunky attitude, right? I don't remember if she was adorable or not. Uh, he says, uh, they ask him, that are solo, ringing a little bit hollow. I know, I agree too. But uh, when I looked back, I saw that really there wasn't that much conversation in the first part to begin with. And it's a lot harder. Scheduling is actually going to get even more difficult for a while now, so, I mean, there might be some more things on this channel that are just me. If you guys don't like that, sorry, best I can do, but I promise you guys I'll always try my best to keep up the energy a little bit if it's just myself, and if it ends up being some other people, then awesome. If not, uh, you know, we're gonna do what we can do here. Dominator39 says, I'm gonna guess SummerSlam 92 at Wembley, then 93, 98, 88, and 89. He's got two of those, 93 and 98. 88 and 89, I think that they were around like the 10, 15,000 or so range, but they might have been around the 20-something thousand too, so it might have been pretty close about that. Uh, what else we have here? Uh, Silent Wood of Doom also throws out a mailbag question. We're going to get to that next week. Peter Piccinini has this year's SummerSlam. Uh, I don't think that we were at 80,000 or so like that this time around. I don't remember actually what the number was this time. Uh, let me double check that while I am wasting my time here. Do, 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 do. Okay, the number that we have for SummerSlam 2016, 15,974. So, no, they come up a little bit short there. Lastly, Guest5 says, Tweaked out moment conformed. And as far as the highest attendance at SummerSlam, they make them up anyway. That's pretty true. They do sort of just go, eh, I don't know, uh, 75. You know, they kind of round up. They never round down, though, you know. Um, so, I take it the way that you can. They're going to lie. They're going to kind of fudge the numbers. They do the same thing with the height and the weight for different people. But if you go by the reporting, those are the answers there. And that brings us to this week's question. We had that whole situation with Finn Balor. That sucks, man. And officially, he has the shortest inaugural title reign in WWE history, which is kind of crazy and really a shame. So your question this week, everybody, what is the second shortest inaugural title reign length of any newly crowned WWE Championship. Now, let me specify that a little bit more to make it easier for you guys. What I mean here is the first debut champion that they had for a title who had the shortest reign length other than Finn Balor. And I'm going to give you guys an example that's not the answer to this because it's not recognized by WWE, but the first ever ECW champion was actually Jimmy Snuka. He won the title April 25th, 1992, lost it the very next day to Johnny Hotbody. So he had a one-day reign as the first ECW champion. But again, that's not recognized by WWE, so as far as the WWE side of things go with their titles and the ones that they kind of bring into the mix with their history, who has the second shortest inaugural title reign length other than Finn Balor? If you think you know the answer or you want to leave a guess or anything else like that, leave your comments below. Next week, I'll tell you the answer to that and anything else we need to break down. But I want to thank you all for listening to this episode. And I think that we've got a whole bunch more topics still left going. So stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs>